All it takes is a shunt, broken down car or roadworks. And soon you're getting very familiar with the rear end of the car in front. But what about those traffic jams that appear to be caused by nothing at all? You know the sort, where you get to the front of the queue, the road's completely clear and there's no police and no accident. Nothing. Welcome to the world of the phantom traffic jam. To find out what's causing those traffic jams, I'm going to try making one of my own. To help me is Dr Eddie Wilson from the Department of Engineering Mathematics at Bristol University. For this experiment, we'll need a large circle. 230 metres in circumference should do it. 22 cars equally spaced around the circle. And 22 fully insured drivers we can trust. Our drivers have no idea what the experiment is about. Right now, folks, what I want you to do is I want you to get into your cars and I want you to drive around the circle at about 15 miles an hour. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Just, ma <laughs> just maintain a constant speed and a constant speed. Time to get those wheels in motion. So we can see what's happening, Eddie and I need a better vantage point. Ready, steady, and they're off. Eddie, what are we expecting to see here? Well, what we've got is a very simple mock-up of a single lane and busy motorway. Everyone's going to try and drive at the same speed, but driving behaviour is not perfect. Some people go a little bit faster, some people go a bit slower, and the traffic will start to bunch up. As Eddie predicted, some of the drivers start to vary their speeds, and the distance between the cars changes. They begin to bunch up, and sure enough, a cluster of vehicles comes to a standstill. A phantom traffic jam has formed. When we speed up the footage, we can see this traffic jam starting to spread backwards around the circle. And once it starts, it just keeps going. So all it takes really then is a couple of people to brake or something and that sets it all off. Sure, if, if there are enough cars on the road, something very minor can get magnified into a, into a traffic jam. A computer simulation shows this even more clearly. When the stationary traffic starts moving again, the jam doesn't disappear. Instead, it travels like a shockwave back along the motorway. Soon, more and more vehicles get caught up and grind to a halt for no obvious reason. Although our phantom traffic jam was on a small scale, this is exactly how misery is caused on Britain's roads every day. So where are you likely to see the worst phantom traffic jams then? Well, Bank Holiday Fridays are the worst. And probably the worst place in the country is the M6 going north out of Birmingham. Sometimes we see stop-start traffic all the way up to the Lake District. OK, then, who was responsible for all those traffic jams? Come on, own up. That blue estate. Uh, blue estate. Blue estate. Blue estate. <laughs> who was driving the blue estate? <laughs> who was it? <laughs> it was him. <laughs> it was him. It was him. We've seen how easy it is to make a traffic jam, but what do we do to prevent them? Well, the first thing is just keep your distance. If you see a space open up in front of you, don't rush to fill it. That's the first thing. Second thing, avoid changing lanes too much. So we've all had it when we're sitting there in a traffic jam, the other lane seems to be going faster. But if you change lane, you probably just make the traffic flow worse. So try to stay in the same lane. And a third way that's helping already is the introduction of variable speed limits on roads prone to congestion. A 50 miles per hour limit has been found to lead to a faster average journey time than 70 miles per hour because it smooths the traffic and tends to reduce the stop and go waves. So as a general rule, stick to steady as you go. Steady speed, steady lane and a steady temper if you do find yourself stuck in a jam. Let's talk of uh, traffic. I was thinking about a man we had on the show not long ago, Sir Sterling Moss. Yeah.